Hey Oak City kids, and a warm welcome to any visitors tuning in. My name's Booth. Many of y'all know me. I'm the director of the Oak City Kids program. Uh, but if you're tuning in as a visitor, I'm excited to introduce myself to you. We are currently walking through a, a little series on wonderful worship. And we're going to continue to dig into that this week. Uh, some weeks we've been going over some lyrics of some songs. Other weeks we've been digging into what does the scripture say about worship. And this week we're going to dig into a little bit more of the scripture on worship, which will be a lot of fun. So uh, before we get going, let's uh, oh, I jumped too far. Let's st first start off with uh, our basic, what is wonderful worship all about? So let's start off there. Worship's really about three things. If we really, really boil it down, there's three things that we're doing during worship. One, we're communicating to God. Worship is a form of communicating to God. It's a, it's a form of talking to God and, and sharing with God, okay? The second thing is, is we recognize how special He is. So when we're communicating to God, when we're sharing with God, we're letting Him know that we recognize how special He is, that He is God, that He's the one and only God, that He's unrivaled, that He's the King of Kings, that we recognize how special he is. Okay, what's another aspect of wonderful worship? It's expressing how much we love and honor him. So in our worship, we're sharing with him how much we love God. We're telling him we love you and we're telling him we honor you, God. We love you and we honor you. We recognize you as God and we love you and honor you. So that's what worship's all about. Now, you can do a lot of different forms of worship, and we're going to get into that one week. Um, singing and, and uh, arts, there's a lot of different ways to worship God. Uh, even reading your Bible and meditating on the Word is a form of worship, which is all awesome and outstanding. But one of your chief and most important ways of worship is through praise and worship. It's through singing. And that's what most of our focus has been on in this series, and it's going to continue to be Let's jump into Psalms 150. It's six verses. It's a ton of fun, and we're going to go through all six verses today. So Psalms 150, and here's what it says. Verse 1, praise the Lord, with a big explanation on it. Praise the Lord is what Psalms 150 says. It says, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. All right, so we're praising the Lord. We're praising God in his sanctuary. We're praising him in his mighty heaven. One of the things that Mr. Booth loves about this verse is, is right here. We're going to praise him where? In his mighty heaven. Hey, who owns heaven? In his mighty heaven. God owns heaven. That's another reason to recognize how special he is. Okay, so praise him for his mighty works. God does mighty works on my behalf and your behalf. Praise him. Oh, this is one of Mr. Moose's favorite. Praise his unequaled greatness. Unequaled greatness. That means that nothing and no one equals God's greatness. He is unrivaled in his greatness. He is unequaled in his graces. There is no thing or no one that is as great as God. I'm going to say that again. Come on, this is really, really important. There is no thing or no one that is as great as God. That is so good. And that's another reason to praise his unequal greatness. That's another way where we're recognizing, God, you're special. No one's like you. There's no greatness like you. Oh, that's so good. All right, let's keep going. Verse 3, praise him with a blast of a ram's horn. Oh, what's a ram? What? What's a ram horn? Oh, come on, y'all. A ram horn is a really neat thing. You have rams and they have horns, and sometimes they use those horns to butt each other, okay? But a ram horn can be turned into an instrument. So those horns on those rams, they fall off. And when they fall off, they can hollow them out and turn them into an instrument to where if you blow in it, it'll make a really loud noise, all right? So praise him with a blast of a ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. 
These are instruments. It's saying, blow the ram's horn, play instruments, sing and make music, praising him, showing him you recognize how much you love him, excuse me, how special he is, and you want to tell him that you love him. Come on. Verse 4, praise him with the trombone and with dancing. Excuse me, tambourine. All right, so praise him with the tambourine and the dancing. I almost missed that one right there. All right, so this is so good. Once again, we're praising him with instruments. All right, praise him with strings and flutes. More instruments. It's saying, hey, pick up an instrument. Play that instrument. The piano, the flute, the tambourine. It can even be the trombone. But play an instrument. Make music and do it in a way where you're recognizing his greatness and you're telling him you love him. All right, here we go. Verse five, praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals, okay? More instruments. It's just telling us keep on praising him. Verse six, our last verse. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. All right, now look, that's pretty basic. What this verse is telling us is, is if anything breathes, it needs to sing praises to the Lord. Are you breathing? You need to be singing praises to the Lord. Is your cat, fish, gerbil, puppy dog breathing? If it's breathing, it will sing praises to the Lord in its own way. Everything on earth that breathes sings praises to the Lord. Matter of fact, most of nature and animals understand and sing praises to the Lord in their way better than most humans do. Okay? All right, but let everything that has breath Sing praises to the Lord. So it's talked to us a lot about different instruments and how we should play those different instruments. But verse 6 makes it real simple. Let everything that's breathing sing praises to the Lord. And this is where worship comes in. Now I want you to notice one thing real quick for me. Does it say, let everything that has breath and can sing really well praises the Lord? No, 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 it does not. Hey, Mr. Booth can't sing at all. Matter of fact, Mr. Booth's really bad at singing. But Mr. Booth has breath. So if Mr. Booth has breath, he should do what? Sing praises to the Lord. Don't worry about whether you're a good singer, whether it's not about how good you are at something. It's not about how good you are at art. It's not about how good you are at singing. If you are doing something and you're doing something unto the Lord, you're doing it for God to show him that you recognize his greatness and you want to tell him you love him. It's not about how good you are at it. It's about praising the Lord. I can't sing, but when I get an opportunity to praise God, you best believe Mr. Booth's going to sing because it's not about my capabilities. It's about his greatness. And it's about me telling him I love him. So good. And the last part of Psalms 150, 150 once again tells us praise the Lord. Just like it started off, it's finishing. So, so good. Hey, y'all, in Psalms 150, it tells us to praise God. 13 times in six verses. 13 times in six verses, it says, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise him. Praise him for this. Praise him with that instrument. Praise him with your singing if you have breath. Hey, y'all, worship is wonderful. I love each and every one of y'all. I'm excited about sharing this message with you. Next week, we're going to dig into another fun song where you can get the lyrics of the song, get to know them better, and then you can sing along. And hey, look, let's take this season, let's take this series, and let's get better at telling God, hey, we recognize that you're special, and we want to tell you we love you. 
Let's get better. Let's let's grow in our t- let's grow in our ability to communicate to God. We recognize His greatness and that we love Him. Hey, and let's even do this. Let's even take more time to communicate to God that we recognize how special He is and we want to tell Him we love Him. What could that look like? What happens if you got up every morning and while you were brushing your teeth, instead of just sitting there while you brush your teeth, just real quiet. Just real quiet, you're brushing your teeth. Instead of doing that, what if while you were brushing your teeth, you played a worship song? And you you brushed your teeth to worship, and you got to tell God while you were brushing your teeth that He's great and you love Him. Come on, y'all. Mr. Booth loves you. Oak City Church loves you. We can't wait to see you again. And I hope that Psalms 150 is a blessing to you.